previously on the Idaho BDR. After leaving the Magruder Corridor, we found ourselves needing to resupply in Montana. This is where we learned that we were going to have to reroute once again. Fire season had officially arrived, and now, due to a road closure, our initial dirt route was completely impassable. And so, for the next two days, we decided to take a break from the dirt. After a couple hundred miles of scenic highway, we ended up in Dwarshack Reservoir, which was the perfect time to get one last oil change in before the last push to Canada. With each mile that we got closer to Wallace, and subsequently the Canadian border as well, the air continued to get more and more saturated with smoke. And so, with only two more days before reaching the Canadian border, I knew that that would be our final adversary. It was now officially our 13th day on the road, and by now we were close enough to the wildfires that we could actually taste the ash and the soot in the air. But to think, in just two days, we'd be standing at the Canadian border, and the trek would be over. All the experiences and accomplishments leading up to this point are already going to be lifelong memories. But we still have a few hundred more miles to go. As the riding day went on into the late afternoon, I found myself getting a little bit anxious. Whatever route we had been following was taking us even closer to the fires. We weren't exactly sure where the fires were at, but we knew we had to be close. Regardless, it was hot, dry, and there was enough of a breeze to really add fuel to whatever fire was in the area. On top of that, the landscape was totally unfamiliar to us. If we did get stuck somewhere, we wouldn't know where to go. Before we even knew it, the smoke in the air was getting so thick that everything was getting cast in that signature dark orange firelight. And now, at this point, it was getting harder and harder to breathe and each breath was burning my throat. As we got deeper into the tree line, it seemed like the smoke was subsiding and maybe our route was taking us a better way and maybe things were going to turn around for us. But that quick morale boost didn't last long. Like I said, we had no idea where the fires were. All we knew was that there was smoke in the air and now we were stuck at a road closure rerouting us from some supposed fire. And once again, we don't know where we are. All we know is that we're gonna have to suddenly figure out how to reroute and hope that this new path will actually take us to where we need to go and not send us back into some fire. Thankfully, we got lucky and we finally broke out of the mountains by Lake Ponderé. Our campsite for the night wasn't far off, but as we got further into northern Idaho, one thing was clear. The smoke in the air was there to stay.
all in the dirt. It's kind of nice. The weather isn't really, really hot yet. I'm glad we got on the road early. I think if it was any later, we might, you know, start to get a little bit cooked. The smoke is very, very thick today, you guys. Very, very thick. It is giving me quite a headache, actually. I'm gonna take my time today and really try and enjoy this last push into Canada. And see if I can't kind of, I don't know, do a little bit of meditating and thinking about this whole journey and what it took to get this far. I really just want to thank everybody that helped me get this far, helped my dad get this far. The two of us really would not have made it as far as we had without the help that came from various companies and people in different towns, people we've met along the way. This journey really would not have been possible without all those people. So to anybody and everybody that I have met and have gotten help from on this trip, thank you. I really mean it. And so I really want to highlight to anybody that is watching this film or you know, somebody that wants to do this or whatever it may be, I absolutely think that you should do it. It is kind of a life-changing experience, or at least it has been a life-changing experience for me, but it's really tough. It's really hard. There's gonna be a lot of grueling days, a lot of nights of really poor sleep, at least for me. You know, I think I might make a few changes to my sleeping arrangements. But prepare yourself for these kinds of challenges. There's a lot of them. And I'll probably do a video series in the future about how I would recommend planning for this, products that I really, really valued and enjoyed on this trip, types of foods, things that I think you should pack, etc. I'll probably do a, a, a video series on that. But for now, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this ride and try and bring you guys along for this last final push. Let's enjoy this last ride, guys. It's now the 14th day on the road, and we've just summited our final peak. There's less than 100 miles between us and the Canadian border, and in only a matter of hours we'll be there. At this point it's pretty hard to not get excited about going home, and not eating MREs for almost every meal, and having a normal place to sleep, and you know, all the little creature comforts that we get used to. But at the same time, this project has definitely been a long set of perspective-altering experiences and challenges, and those are all things that I'm grateful for having. With the final 100 miles ticking by, I don't really even think I was paying attention to what I was doing. I was only thinking about the last 14 days and everything that it took to get this far.
my helmet full of dirt, the air full of smoke, and pretty much everything around us seeming like it was on fire, I was officially ready to go home. Yeah, I was ready to go home. Oh my god! Yeah! Oh my god, it's the Canadian border. Oh, we gotta go around. Holy c We made it to the Canadian border! <laughs> oh my gosh. 1,571. I'll call that 1,600 miles. 1,571. I'm calling 1,571. Okay. I love you so much. Oh, baby. I love you, Dad. We did it. Yeah, we did. That Two weeks. Easy. That was not <sighs> easy. We'll go find John and have some lunch. That's it. All right. 1,571 miles. Oh, let's see how dusty I look. Man, you timed it perfect, too. I can put oh. stuff in there.